Hello again, welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to our Pyrotech Tutorial Spotlight Series. Um, I want to start off today by just mentioning something that I had a question in the comments and I wanted to address it in this video just to show it for anybody that may have a question about it, go ahead and show that off in this video. And that is related to the wood rack and modded wood types, right? Um, and that's that's a really good question. Do, does it work with modded wood types? And the answer is yes. Um, but yeah, it does work completely with every modded wood type that I've tried. So for example, right here I have wildwood logs from Roots. If we pull out the oak here and we put this in, you can see that it does keep the texture. Um, anything that classifies as um, as a log. So for example, if we do a CT hand, you can see um, or dictionaried as log wood. That's what this looks at, the wood rack. Um, it looks at the or dictionary. Is it a log wood? And if so, it will go into the wood rack. If it does not uh, go into the wood rack, you know, if you come across a modded wood that does not work with the wood rack, then chances are the issue is with the modded wood not being or dictionaried correctly um, and not really with pyrotech. Um, every modded wood type that I've tested entails and stuff. Um, Kind of decorating has worked fine so I just wanted to address that on here um, also a question about modded items I guess I didn't put any um, into this but they, they're gonna render just fine so if we take living wood sword uh, we pull this out there you go we have living wood sword in there um, all that stuff's gonna render just fine um, regardless of what mod and stuff it's from so now what we're gonna be talking about today is continuing on pushing forward into a bit more involved stuff within Pyrotech. And once you have your initial stuff set up, you kind of work want to begin working on moving towards actual smelting, right? Because um, as it stands right now, if you just have this campfire, you're not going to be able to cook cobblestone, right? You can't put cobblestone onto uh, a campfire. And right now you have no way of smelting. And if you recall, the furnace is a bit more expensive. And really at this point you want to start working towards um, smelting stone, start getting into clay, things like that because it is required uh, to move forward. Now what you want to do is to initially smelt things, you're going to have to create what's called a pit kiln. Um, and to do this, the way it's going to work, let's grab these out. And at the bare minimum, you're going to need to get yourself a pit kiln, um, which is just dried plant fibers. It's very, very cheap to craft. Um, and then you're going to need a straw bale, which requires straw, which to get straw, you're going to dry out wheat. Um, but you can use right here these dried plant fibers with twine as well. But I do suggest um, moving into drying wheat as quickly as possible because um, this is kind of a double step process. You're going to have to dry two things. They are a little bit quicker, um, of course, than the wheat. But, uh, but I mean, to get the four straw, you're looking at eight dried plant fibers. If you get wheat up and going... It's going to be a bit quicker um, to get that straw. So I highly suggest moving into that. We're going to talk a little bit about farming uh, in just a moment, actually, ways to or a way to kind of make it a bit better. Uh, you're also going to need three oak wood logs and some kind of fire starting device, which you should be familiar with at this point. So what we're going to do, um, I do have the weather cycle turned off, but before you set this up, make sure and cover it. Um, that's basically rule number one make sure you have this covered because you're going to be burning kind of an exposed fire uh, with the pit kiln and you don't want it to rain on it because it will put it out um, so do make sure that it's covered um, in some way you know have it indoors have a roof over it or something like that and so what we're going to do is we're going to put down our pit kiln first this block here and this is kind of the the master block of uh, you know kind of the smelting process and then we're going to place down the items that we want to burn now you'll notice you can put up to eight items they have to be same type items so if you want to smelt uh, for example you want to smelt um, clay buckets you can put down you know eight unfired clay buckets we could place these down now by default you know they don't stack they can be placed down it's just a little bit more involved to place it you know place them one at a time like this but um, even if things don't stack you can put up to eight of pretty much any item that you want down for your pit kiln it's also important that you have these four blocks around it it needs to be some kind of solid block um, so just putting it into the ground with grass dirt sand whatever around it is um, 
is fine. And so next up, what you're going to do is you're going to take straw bale, place that down, we'll dump that on top. And you can see, we can kind of see the cobblestone up here exposed. That's fine, it's supposed to be that way. Then we're going to place our logs down on the top of this, like so. And then all we have to do is just ignite this. Like that, and like that. And then we just have to let it burn for a while. Now it does take a little while. Um, you will be able to look at this arrow and see as progress builds up. Yeah, there we go, we just got a little tick on there. Um, but it is going to take a while. If you take a look at, for example, if we pull up this cobblestone here, um, it will show up in your recipes here with the pit kiln. You can see it's 14 minutes uh, to smelt this. So, fairly long time. Uh, we will be able to make faster systems for smelting before too long. Um, and it's going to be 14 minutes regardless of how many items that you have in there. Okay. So, I did 8 cobblestone. Honestly, whenever you're smelting things within the pit kiln, I would honestly suggest that you just go ahead and smelt in bulk because 14 minutes, long time to wait. You're going to need the stone uh, and you're going to need the buckets, to be honest. Um, and to make those unfired clay buckets, it is just these unfired clay bricks and those are just lumps of clay like so. Um, it's a little bit more than just placing out like three clay. You know, don't try that, but it, you're just going to make those bricks. Um, and it will cause your clay to go pretty far because four is going to make two bricks. So it ends up cheaper in the long run, but just a heads up on that. Now, also at this point, you may want to make, and you will have to probably make things like cobbled granite. Um, you can create these just with granite rock or diorite rocks or andesite rocks or... Uh, you can actually even make, you know, cobblestone using stone rocks and then a, a lump of clay and you're going to get this cobbled, um, these cobbled stones. And I mention this because if you're having issues finding granite, you're going to have to have granite in a second um, to create our granite anvil. And that's a way that you can make it without necessarily having found granite because, of course, granite rocks can come from things like gravel and stuff. Um, so just bear that in mind. And then you can take this and smelt it um, and get this smooth version. Now over to the failure chance, you're going to see a failure chance on most everything within Pyrotech. Most things. There's a few things that don't have a failure chance. But most things will. And the way that you look at this, this is, if it succeeds, it's going to make smooth granite, right? This item over here is your failure item, and there, there can be a few different things. Um, I know whenever I've been working on tails, you know, adding the custom recipes, I can add custom recipes, so different chances for these various different things that can come up. Um, so for example, with the granite, you may get ash or you may get five granite rocks, um, but you're not necessarily going to get everything in this. So just bear that in mind, but that's what you're going to get as a failure item. Um, like for example, I have things in tails with really high failure chance or some things where you're wanting the failure item more so in some cases than the primary item. Uh, so just bear that in mind if it fails you're going to get that. Now if it does fail it's not going to fail on all eight blocks. Um, it will fail on you know maybe with 33 percent you might be looking at two failures and six successes. Um, so you're going to get, you know, six smooth stone and maybe some stone rock or um, some ash. This has finished up. As you can see, the fire stops. Um, and you can see right there that we do have eight stone that came through. And we have, uh, looks like five buckets here. Um, if you notice, there's a couple different things that can come from the unfired uh, buckets. There is ash, pottery shards, and pottery fragments that can come from smelting the buckets. So what you're going to do, uh, once your pit kilns are done, and I do, I want to make a mention, I do highly suggest that you set up a lot of space for these and have a bunch of them, especially smelting smooth stone because you're going to be using an absolute ton of it, so just be prepared. And what we're going to do is we're going to come over and we're just going to left click this, and there we go. We have broken it, we've gotten our stone, we've gotten our ash from this. And then over here to our buckets, there we go, we got um, these actually managed to stack. 
Um, actually, I think, yeah, these will stack up to four um, once they're smelted. And then these pottery fragments and pottery shards, go ahead, I would probably keep these because you can turn these into sand piles, um, which will be useful. We can make sand with that if you don't have access to sand. Um, but beyond that, in default pyrotech, there's not a ton of use for these beyond that. Um, but if you want to keep them for sand, it's not a bad idea because you're going to be smelting a lot of clay. So now that we can smelt stone, there's a lot that we can do. But before we get into that, I want to take a quick detour and cover a couple things that will be helpful to you, kind of within this same kind of time frame. First up, I want to talk about mining with Pyrotech installed. Um, it does change up the way, you know, we mentioned it a little bit last episode with the coal where you don't get coal necessarily whenever you mine, you get these coal pieces. Um, now, if we set this out, I want to show you an example here. Um, I've got a couple different picks here. I have a crude pickaxe, I have an obsidian pickaxe, and then I have an obsidian pickaxe that's been enchanted with Fortune 3. And the amount of output that you get from mining things like coal is going to be dependent on your pickaxe. Kind of like a new, almost fortune type effect, but one that does also stack with fortune. So if we come over and we mine this, it's, of course it's very, very slow, it's a crude pickaxe. You can see that we got uh, some stone rocks and we got one coal base. Um, in my experience, you're going to get like one or two coal pieces. You're not going to get much. Honestly, I don't even suggest mining coal until you get better picks. Uh, truth be told, I would just kind of mark it, keep it in mind, come back later kind of a thing. Uh, maybe if you've pushed on to where you have the flint pick, I'll show you that one real quick. If you mine it with the flint pick, um, you can see I got four. So it's a little bit better output um, once you get up to the flint pickaxe. Um, and as you progress on up to like obsidian and stuff, um, it's going to be a bit better. Um, also, we'll go ahead and let's grab a diamond pick so I can show you that also. And then if we were to break this with like an obsidian pick, you can see we got five. It's generally going to be around the five mark, four, five, six, maybe. Uh, but nothing, nothing too, too crazy. Now, next up, we have an obsidian pickaxe here with fortune three. So we got four to six ish um, with a regular obsidian pickaxe. Uh, well, that time we got just coal. That is a small chance. Um, I've only noticed it really when you're using better picks, but there's a small chance that you're going to get coal. However, unfortunately with this, it does not duplicate that coal when you have Fortune 3, but you do get, uh, you know, a solid piece of coal. So it's not too bad. Um, but if we break this, you can see that we got 20 coal pieces. It's pretty good. And bear in mind that you can take these. And now that we've started smelting stone, we're going to talk about masonry bricks here in a minute, but you can start at this point making those stone torches that we talked about last episode. Uh, now lastly, if we mine this with a diamond pickaxe, you can see that it goes back to vanilla behavior. Um, so you're getting your coal, uh, just your solid block. So once you get past the pyrotech stuff, um, you're going to be able to mine um, kind of in the vanilla fashion. So once you move past the beginning of the game, you get back to more traditional uh, methods, unless it's altered within uh, you know, a given pack. And this is default recipe, so very, very doable. Um, and bear in mind that now that you've gotten up to stone and masonry bricks, you can start making um, stone tools even. But one thing I do want to mention is the stone pickaxe does not work like the diamond pick. If we break this off, you can see that we're still going to get those coal pieces um, with the stone pick. The diamond one, of course, will always give you the coal. So you kind of have to work your way up before you can just reliably get coal. And because, of course, mining diamonds is a bit more involved um, because you're going to need to get iron pick. And worth noting is that the obsidian pick is capable of uh, breaking diamonds, but the obsidian pick is a little bit um, to get into. Um, so really at that point, you can make an iron pick also. Um, so just a heads up there. But also whenever you're mining, you will most likely come across this. This is fossil ore and you can break it with a crude pickaxe or better. And once again, using a better pick, you're gonna get better output. And from this, you are going to get bone shards. And these can be used to make the bone tools, which are on par with flint. Aside from that, there's no difference, but you know, they're equivalent to flint. And in addition, you can turn this into bone meal on the granite anvil, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. So just kind of bear that in mind. Not a bad material to just find. Um, being able to dig up bone meal 
uh, just in the world is kind of useful. Now next up, before we move on, I want to talk about potash mulch because at this point you're probably, especially as you start doing a lot of pit kilns, your campfires might be burning um, and burning out in this case, <laughs> but you're going to, to build up a large stockpile of this ash. Um, it actually comes from a lot of sources within Pyrotech. And using this ash and some piles of wood chips, which you're going to get these as a byproduct anytime you cut wood, right? On your chopping block or with your saws, you're going to be getting wood chips. Um, so very, very common materials and then bone meal or meat of any kind and you can make yourself potash mulch. And I do highly suggest you take your bone meal and turn it into potash mulch. It's not so much an instant gratification thing like bone meal is, but it's better and it's better in the long run and you're going to get four to one bone meal and then just kind of these almost, you're going to have tons of this stuff lots of these byproduct items so I do highly suggest you make this potash mulch so for example let's grab ourselves some seeds here and if we take and we right click that potash mulch it's going to change uh, the way that this farmland works and looks um, what's going to happen is it's going to occasionally as long as this potash lasts it's going to randomly give bone meal effects so it's like bone meal not instant, but it's going to last a lot longer, and it's going to do quite a few more bone mill effects um, than a sing, you know a single bone mill would. And plus, you're going to do four farmland with one bone mill, basically. And another nice thing is when it's the potash mulch is used on it, it becomes immune to any and all trample effects. So an extremely, extremely useful material, um, and a bit later on we're going to talk about ways to automate keeping your farmlands covered in that potash mulch and it does make a very big difference as to how fast your crops grow um, so I do highly suggest it because um, you're gonna be between the fossil ore breaking that down for bone meal you're gonna have plenty of bone meal and you'll be able to create plenty of this potash and you're gonna be using a lot of that straw for your pit kilns so pushing on at least to wheat seeds highly suggested and over to the clay bucket before we talk about stone and kind of progressing on I want to mention the clay bucket because we talked about the wooden bucket and how it drains durability and stuff um, and I want to show you that the clay bucket if you have this it does not drain durability like the wooden bucket does um, if I recall correctly the the reasoning behind that is because the wooden bucket leaks whereas the clay bucket is you know a solid it's an actual bucket um, but it is going to steadily get damaged. Of course, it only has those 12 uses. So if we move this water over, boom, it's down to 11 out of 12. Um, also, don't put hot liquids in this bucket. It's not going to be able to move your lava and things like that. If you're used to, um, like, TC and stuff like that, you're used to being able to make clay buckets and, and move the lava one time, um, I just want to show you that's not the case. If you pick this up, um, it's going to quickly destroy in about four seconds, and you're going to get set on fire, which is no good. And... <laughs> Um, it's not something you don't want to be moving uh, lava with your clay buckets and wooden buckets way worse so um, just do bear that in mind unless you're just moving that a couple feet like lava and you only have to move it a couple feet and then you're done with it and you don't mind getting set on fire then okay but uh, not not really not really suggested anyways so you've got your pit kilns up and running the bare minimum that I would suggest smelting um, the bare minimum, just to get you started, I do suggest that you smelt up at least four granite. Um, so that, and when it comes to pyrotech smelting, when I say at least four granite, go above that because you know you do have that fail chance. You have that thirty, uh, that thirty-three percent fail chance with this. So do smelt more than the bare minimum. Generally, I would suggest if you need, um, you know, a bit of stone, smelt up a lot of stone. Um, because it does take a long time and it's pyrotech's not really something that it's like oh i need this let me run over and do this in five seconds like normal minecraft if you need something you need to plan for that you know because it's going to take you almost an entire minecraft day to smelt that um, so do plan accordingly and plan ahead don't just do everything last minute and just expect that it's gonna just be instant like normal Minecraft is. That's one thing I love about it is those long um, kind of planned crafts. 
So do smelt up that granite and smelt yourself up a cobblestone slab. You only really necessarily need one of these to be smelted. But of course, once again, do smelt more of those because you have that 33% chance to fail. Um, now initially, you're not going to be able to just craft these out. So what you're going to want to do is do this recipe right here, these stone rocks and these lumps of clay. Smelt that. That's how you're going to get your cobblestone slabs. That's how you're going to get your initial stone slabs to make your granite anvil. Um, granite anvil is going to be extremely important. And like the chopping block, this does have a durability, so it will slowly degrade, though not as fast as the chopping block does. Um, you're also probably going to want to make yourself a compacting bin at this point, which requires more of these stone slabs and planks. Um, but the nice thing is at this point, if you only came out with one or two stone slabs don't worry because what you can do is you can take your stone and place it onto the granite anvil and you're gonna see up there it shows a recipe and it says type pickaxe um, the way that this works there is two tools that you'll be using with the granite anvil you'll be using a pick and you'll be using a hammer and it depends on what you want to do with the item that you place on there as to what tool that you're going to use so for example the pickaxe if we take that and we hold right click you're going to see that that little arrow just filled up and we broke that down into stone slabs. Okay. Now there is a little bit of durability damage to your pick and there is some durability damage to the anvil, uh, but it does take a while to break um, one of these granite anvils. And if you ever want to check your recipes for the granite anvil, you can just, of course, hit U on that and it'll show you everything that you can make. But bear in mind that there are some recipes and they won't show up in here, but there are some recipes that can only be done on the ironclad anvil, which is kind of your upgraded anvil. Uh, if you notice, there's 15 pages here of different recipes. There's 16 pages on the ironclad anvil. Um, so there is a difference between the two. Of course, ironclad anvil being a lot, um, a lot sturdier and the granite anvil being not so sturdy. Um, with default pyrotech, the big things are going to be things related to obsidian. Um, also, I believe diamonds can't be broken until you get to the iron, uh, the ironclad anvil either. Um, breaking these into diamond shards no, you can still do them in default pyrotech. I did not realize that. Now, I do want to mention that, um, at least at the moment in this version of pyrotech, there is a small issue, um, and I've been running into that with tails, where, for example, cobblestone, there is a couple different things that you can do with it. You can either hit it with a pick and get cobblestone slabs, or you can hit it with a hammer and get stone rocks. Now, at the moment, it's kind of, kind of broken. The, the slabs work just fine. However, the hammer recipe does not work. Um, and that's something that I've been running to, running into with Tails because I have a ton, an absolute ton of recipes that have different outputs depending on which tool that you use. Um, but unfortunately, that is not working. But unfortunately, right now, whenever you can use either tool, it doesn't work appropriately. Uh, so just a heads up on that. But with default Pyrotech, there's not many things that have that. I think it's really just cobblestone, and it would just be breaking that down into rock. So it's not a huge issue with default Pyrotech. It is a little bit more of an issue when it comes to modded uh, kind of pyrotech because, like I said, with tails, I have a lot of recipes. Now, next up, you may also want to make a compacting bin. This has quite a few uses. And the way this works is you take a certain number of materials. Of course, once again, this does support JEI. And it is worth mentioning that uh, there are certain things that this compacting bin cannot do. Uh, for example, coal pieces. You know, we talked about those quite a bit you can't compact coal pieces into blocks of coal. It does not work. Um, you're gonna have to actually get up to the mechanical compactor, which is a little bit further in, not too bad. Uh, you can make the blocks of charcoal though, uh, so just bear that in mind because we're gonna be talking about creating lots of charcoal. Um, you can also make ash piles and you can make your lapis blocks, your redstone blocks. Um, you can also do this with slag, which we're gonna talk a bit more about whenever we get into the metal processing. Uh, but the way that this works is you're going to need a shovel. It's kind of similar to the anvil in that regard. You're going to be using a tool to actually process things with this. So if you put in the, like, for example, bone mill, we want to make bone blocks. Um, you could say we put in 32 bone mill to this, and it's going to, the output's going to be four uh, bone blocks. And then we can just hold right click, and it's going to process this down uh, bit by bit and make our bone blocks. Uh, if we throw in some clay, there's 16 clay, and it's going to make four blocks of clay, two clicks with this. Now bear in mind, whenever it comes to things like the granite anvil and the compacting bin, I do want to mention that depending on your tool quality, so for example, if instead we had a crude shovel, 
and we do this, it's going to take us four clicks, whereas as an obsidian shovel only took us two. Um, so depending on your tool quality, it can take, um, you know, quite a bit less or quite a bit more uh, uses. Like, for example, if you're using a crude pick uh, with this, it's going to take a lot more swings. And in turn, it's going to take a lot more durability. And it's going to take a lot more time, especially when you're doing a lot of things. So having upgraded tools for uh, doing things on the anvil or compacting bin, definitely worth it, um, in my opinion. Also worth noting, of course, at this point, you're not going to be able to enchant things, but also worth noting things like unbreaking will help when it comes to using the anvil or the compacting bin. And the last thing I want to mention, because I know it's about wrapping up point four this second episode, but masonry bricks, just bear in mind that at this point you can craft them. We're going to be using them a bit in the next episode and talking a little bit about those. Uh, but those just require stone brick slabs uh, to make your masonry bricks. And stone bricks are crafted, default recipe. Um, so just bear those in mind. They're very important, and that is why you're going to need a lot of stone. So with that said, I'm going to wrap up the second episode. Next episode, though, we are going to be talking about um, creating charcoal within Pyrotech and starting to move into kind of the automated machines. Some of the basic automation machines um, probably kind of just move through those pretty quick. They're all pretty straightforward. And then probably the following episode start talking about metalworking and getting into advanced machines and the really cool automation stuff. Um, so anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy this episode. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. Um, I hope to see you guys next time. Until then, as always, do take care. Stay safe. I'll see you guys then.